Right, so my voice is absolutely vogged at the moment because I've got a really bad cough and it's just not going away. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this anyway. The EDA Series 2 Episode 1, that video is in the works at the moment. It's fully recorded. A lot of work goes into those videos. So in the meantime, here's another Big Finish Quick Picks. About a week ago, I put out a poll to see which Big Finish release you want to hear about. Colditz and the Lovecraft Invasion were overwhelming winners in that regard. And I know you're eager to hear those ones, but I typed this one out a few weeks ago. And yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do this one first. Sorry, not sorry. Coming out in 2000, The Fires of Vulcan was one of the earliest plays in the monthly adventures range. This is back when they still released them on cassette tape alongside the CDs, which is just peak nostalgia for me. I used to live out of my tape player. It's set in the city of Pompeii a day before Volcano Day, and I didn't realise that that rhymed until I said it, but I'm going with it. If this situation sounds familiar to you at all, it probably should. It very well may have served as inspiration for The Fires of Pompeii, the much-loved 10th Doctor and Donna episode from season 4 of New Who. I made a video about it comparing it to the real history. I, 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 I worked really hard on it. Please give it a watch. I'm, I'm desperate. It's being demonetized. Aside from the setting and the titles being almost identical and then taking place at the same time, these are two completely different stories. Instead of the 10th Doctor and Donna, it's the 7th Doctor played by Sylvester McCoy and Bonnie Langford playing the companion Melanie Bush. There's also no magma monsters. This is a pure historical, a story with no sci-fi elements aside from the Doctor and the TARDIS, a concept that I really wish the main show would bring back. They do share some thematic similarities though. They're both stories where the companion tries to convince the Doctor to let them change something about history. In the fires of Pompeii, the dilemma is can you change history to warn the people of Pompeii about the volcanic eruption? In the fires of Vulcan, it's can Mel and the Doctor change history to save themselves? This is an absolutely brilliant story that plays with ideas of predestination and the consequences of knowing too much about your own future. Much to the confusion of archaeologists, a London police box from the 1960s is discovered buried among the ruins of Pompeii. The unit is called in, they dig it out, they put it in storage, and without thinking too hard about it, they call the first incarnation of the Doctor they can get a hold of, the seventh Doctor, who comes to the obvious conclusion that his adventures will inevitably end with him dying during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79 CE. And now that he knows this, he can't change it. It's set in stone. His future has become fixed and he can't change it no matter what he does. The loss of the TARDIS, ex excavation in 1980, it's all part of history. Well, how can it be if it hasn't happened yet? It will happen, Mel. But there's still time to stop it. No, I've already seen it. We can't stop it. You'd think that he could just avoid Pompeii after this, but if he did that, the TARDIS would never be buried in Pompeii in the first place. Then it would never be discovered in Pompeii, and Unit would never inform him of its discovery, and he wouldn't know to avoid Pompeii in the first place, so if the TARDIS were to land in Pompeii, he would just step out, and then it would be buried, and then it would be discovered 2,000 years later, and oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. And now it's actually happened. <sighs> What's going on? I'm sorry, Mel. What for? Tell me, Doctor. The year is AD 79. The Roman Empire is under the short-lived rule of Titus. We're in the city of Pompeii, a prosperous trading center on the Bay of Naples. If you look between the buildings over there, you can see a mountain by the name of Vesuvius. The volcano? Yes, the volcano. The TARDIS has landed in the city of Pompeii a day before Volcano Day, and the Doctor and Mel step out and quickly lose access to it when an earthquake drops a building on it, but not before being mistaken for prophets of the Egyptian goddess Isis, whose cult had found worshippers throughout the Mediterranean at that point. Finding themselves at the centre of religious power struggle, the Doctor runs out the clock, cheating at dice with the city's greatest gladiator. The Doctor is completely resigned to his fate. So this is it, the final journey. I had hoped for a while longer, time to prepare slipping away from me, only just arriving, but we've already stayed a lifetime. Too many lifetimes, withering like roses. Well, Mel is anything but, doing everything in her power to escape, raging against the dying of the light, desperately trying to find a way to get back to the TARDIS and snap the Doctor out of his funk. So what you're saying is we've just got to accept what's happening? We, we can't even try to get out of here? I'm saying that history has already taken account of our actions, and it's shown us their outcome. We can't cheat time now. No. No. I'm sorry, Doctor, I can't accept that. Please listen to me, Mel. But you might think you know what's going to happen in the future, but all I know is that we aren't beaten yet. I mean... I mean, what if Unit were wrong? Or, or what if the TARDIS will end up in Pompeii one day, but just not yet? No. I'm going to find a way out of this, whatever it takes. Are you coming with me or not? I'm sorry. So am I. But I can't give up, Doctor. Even if you can.
This is the kind of timey wimey trap that I love in my Doctor Who. The characters, ensnared by continuity itself, working against destiny to find a way to escape their fate. It's brilliant, it's like watching a puzzle be solved. There's a lot of potential for these stories in Doctor Who, but the main show is anything but consistent. Sometimes knowing your future sets it in stone, other times knowing your future is the reason you can change it, which just deflates any tension from the episodes where the Doctor insists that it's set in stone. This is the Doctor as you rarely see him. He's completely defeated in this, not seeing a way out and refusing to even try to see one. Something that Mel simply cannot accept. But as the Doctor warns, it seems time itself is working against them. Every little bit of progress Mel makes, there's always a setback. The priestess of the Capitolian Triad, a representative of the gods of the Roman Pantheon, constantly working against them. And the gladiator the Doctor cheated, vowing revenge, demanding satisfaction through blood. And all the while, the time of the eruption grows closer and closer. The stranger, the cheat, the, the... Doctor. The Doctor! He is responsible for my shame. This doctor impugned my honesty. But told the truth. And used trickery and fortune to outfight me. You attacked him. In Roman society, gladiators pretty much survive on the will of the crowd. They must remain popular, at least with the appearance of having honor. Honor is everything to a gladiator. If they fall out of favor with the crowd, they're pretty much dead. And the doctor beat him at dice, pointed out he was cheating, and then knocked him on his ass. I live for the contest now, for the glorious battle, but still I live. Should I lose their favor? Should they think me so easily brought down by a, a, a deceitful stranger, an impertinent imp, then they shall not thought to spare me again. It is a matter of life and death to me, Valeria, and I swear it will be the doctor's death that safeguards my life. The Fires of Vulcan is brilliant. It's just a feast for history buffs like myself. Throughout the story, you learn about how Roman slavery works and how codes of honor basically cause slaves to enslave themselves. You learn how gladiators work, the city governments, the role of religion in Roman society, even Roman dining etiquette. Just these little tidbits of Roman life woven throughout the fabric of the narrative. And it just makes the city feel so alive in a way that the Fires of Pompeii just never did, while keeping you on the edge of your seat, wondering how they're going to get out of it, if they can find a loophole. I mean, you know that they will, but seeing them figure it out if you haven't yet given this one a listen, definitely give it a go. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, share it with a friend. If you want to know more about Pompeii and what happened on that horrible day 2000 years ago, I actually did a video on the fires of Pompeii and the real history behind it. It hasn't done well on the algorithm so far and it's been demonetized, which means it's pretty much dead in the water. So yeah, give it a view, give it a like, give it a share. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.